Hey guys, Josh here. If you follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, you know that I've been doing a lot of 3D printing lately. A lot of that has to do with the fact that it's miserable outside. It's mostly wind and rain and, and horribleness. So I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of flying uh, for a while, at least, until this blows over. The other reason for that is, of course, that I enjoy it. I like the process. One thing you'll see me often refer to is my extruder. I have the Flexion Extruder by Diebase Engineering. Uh, I got it for a review a long time ago, and I fell in love with it. It's great at printing flexible materials like TPU, TPE. There's a whole host of reasons for making it great at printing flexibles. Uh, now, some of those things, unfortunately, have caused some issues uh, with printing standard filaments like PLA. Traditionally speaking, your extruder assembly usually has a spring tension arm that helps hold the filament in place and guide it through. With the flexion, this is done with a cam dial, so you actually dial in a specific tension to run that filament through. This can cause problems with the harder filaments where the uh, filament diameter might not be exact or just it can't get a good enough grip on it or something. I'm, I'm not an expert. It's almost as if every time I post about it, someone brings up, well, you can't print PLA with it, so eh. And, and up till recently, I haven't printed a lot of PLA. Uh, since I started on the 3D printed plane project, though, that's been mostly what I've been printing. And uh, after a while, yeah, I noticed some issues. And while the Diabase team did do a great job in helping me fix a lot of those issues, it didn't entirely get rid of them. Uh, another thing that I found was, while well, the brand of PLA that I was using was a lot more rigid than some other brands. I found one that works amazing. I reviewed it recently, and uh, I have had almost no problems with it. Uh, actually, I was able to print down to 0 0.08 millimeter resolution, which is 80 micron. So that's really fantastic. I mean, great results with that. Uh, though the occasional issue would still pop up. And that brings me to what I want to talk about today. Uh, after dealing with this for a while and kind of being on the forefront of saying, no, it does work with PLA, it does work with PLA, there must just be something wrong with my settings, a couple of people mentioned using the HT or high temperature hot end uh, actually worked better with PLA. I checked the Flexion website and sure enough they have a little chart up that shows that the high temperature hot end works better with PLA than the standard version. The downside is super flexible materials like TPE or even their own X60 uh, do not work with it. Uh, the other trade-off, and this is according to their support, is that you will get a lot more oozing and blobs, uh, so you really have to watch your settings. So after many, many attempts at cleaning up what is an obvious issue with PLA uh, through th settings and trial and error, I decided, you know what? let's go ahead and try it. So I swapped out my hot end the other day and let me tell you if you have the flexion and you have the HT hot end for it give it a shot for PLA. While it's true there was some more oozing and things that I had to readjust for uh, you know I had to drop my temperature a little bit or maybe actually raise it in some cases different different filaments have different settings of course. What I have noticed is a much more stable printing experience. Things are working a lot better. I'm printing at a little bit higher speeds than I was. Uh, I'm not getting the under extrusion problems. It's really a lot better. I have noticed some really fine stringing but it's the kind of stuff that I can just pull off with my fingers or maybe just zap it with a heat gun real quick and it just disappears. So we're talking like cotton candy level thin stringing, just tiny. Now again, I'm not a 3D printing expert. I don't claim to be. Uh, I, I, I do what I can. I test as many filaments as I can. I try to get in a print a day, which might make a cool thing to do on this channel. Who knows? But as far as this is concerned, I just kind of bang at it and find out what I can. So I got some samples here of what I'm doing with the HT hot end, and you can see I'm, I'm very pleased with them. This here is a little bust of Albert Einstein. Uh, this was printed at, you know, I want to say this was 80 micron, but it may have been 120. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It looks fantastic. You really have to see this in person to appreciate it. The wrinkles on his face. This model is fantastic and the wrinkles on his face and everything show up just wonderfully. The texture in the hair is just gorgeous and no problems at all uh, with the HT hot end. Just came out great. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, you may have seen these as well. I finally decided to give uh, some lithophanes a try. Lithophane? Lithopane? Litho... Lithophane? That sounds right. Also really happy with how this turned out. This was my first attempt. Um, obviously you can't see much on there, but uh, I'll show you a shot here. When you hold it up to the light, the differences in thickness of the material 
uh, allows different amounts of lights to come through. So you end up with a black and white image and it's really something you need to see in person again to experience, uh, to really understand how neat it looks because you also get a sense of depth out of it that's really cool. Uh, I printed that one there of my wife and this little family portrait that you can't see here, but I'll show you in another shot that you can see. And uh, again, just fantastic detail, really smooth, great layers on it. This I actually printed standing up, but uh, it did a fantastic job uh, and, and kept everything nice and smooth and really high detail. And I'm really happy with how these have turned out. So basically the rundown, if you have the, uh, the HT Hot End and you haven't been using it with PLA, at least give it a shot. Uh, you might be surprised at how good it, it does turn out. Um, the, the stringing issues, the blobbing can be fixed in settings for the most part. It, uh, it's definitely worth it if you're having extrusion problems. And the side benefit of that is, is if I want to suddenly start printing something like nylon or whatever, I can do that. I don't have to swap out my hot end. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. Thanks for your time. I got some more stuff coming up soon, uh, hopefully really soon. Just got to wait for this weather to clear up. Uh, like my video if you got something cool to say. Go ahead and drop me a comment. And by all means, please subscribe. Thanks.